and Fletcher Brown with another artist video blog here at kicks96country.com. Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel. And uh, I want to welcome for the very first time to the Kicks 96 Studios, Alabama native country artist from uh, Gardendale, Alabama. Please welcome Josh Kinney. How are you, Josh? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me Thanks on, Thanks for man. coming in That's and visiting with us. Awesome, yeah. Now, why is it taking so long for you who are from, you're from Gardendale, Alabama. That's barely two hours south of us. Yep, that's right. Why is right. it taking so long for you to come to visit us here at Kicks 96? Well, man, I, I, it took a while for us to get a song off, out the door. But you know what? We worked hard, and Striker got some guys together, and we've been working on some music. We really wanted some stuff that we were proud of uh -huh. and stuff to really push, and I felt like we finally crossed that barrier, gotten into the music's good now. Now we just need to push it harder. So we got that music good, and now we're like trying to push it and get it everywhere we can right now. Okay. So I think it was just a matter of just waiting to the right time. Well, you have a pretty interesting story. Like I said, you're Alabama native, so, you know, home state, got to represent. That's right. Uh, Gardendale's just south of us. Just before you get to Birmingham, you'll hit Gardendale if you're heading that way. Um, and you actually grew up in a house full of folks, like like a bunch That's of foster right. kids. That's right. Right? Now, oh, were yeah. you a foster kid, or was it your family that <laughs> no. brought in the foster So, so it, we grew up. It was just six kids in the house with mm -hmm. my parents as well. And uh, my mom sat us down one day, and all of us were just in the family room. And, you know, we're, we don't really, we didn't grow up with a lot of money either. So it doesn't really make sense when you look at it from afar. But she sat us down. And she was like, hey, guys, uh, me and dad really feel led to, to go into foster care. You know, they took a class there in church. And they were like, we feel led to do this. And they were like, what do y'all think about that? And, of course, we were all ecstatic about it. We gave new brothers and sisters. And then, of course, like right after we said yes to that, literally like the next week, here comes a kid just walking into our to our house and it's not e it's not easy doing it because these kids come in especially when they're seven eight years old they come in with problems mm -hmm. so it's not easy i mean these kids they they lash out uh scream at you and stuff and it wasn't always easy but we finally uh ended up adopting three of them and it's good it's cool because all three of them are brothers in themselves so we got two families in one man that's beautiful yeah see i love the foster care system my family was a foster family when I was growing up. I mean, my yeah. youngest sister is adopted. So we were late there. Yeah, there we go. absolutely. It's like you know, welcoming you know, you know, kids with with uh, who need. I mean, they well, they do have problems, you know, and but their biggest problem is that they need and they mm -hmm. need they need patience and they need love and they need care and they need boundaries and they need all of those things. And the fact that you said your parents, you know, were led to do that. That's right. Beautiful. Yeah. So tell your parents. I said. First of all, thank you. They'll probably be watching this. Really? So, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. How do you for doing that? And yeah. Making a difference in the life of a kid that needs it. And I encourage anybody else to, if you're thinking about being a foster family, really seriously look into it. It's one of the most fun things that, honestly, it like changed our life in the biggest way possible. I can't, couldn't even imagine being like without those kids now. So I would say the, the, the biggest lesson that I learned from being a foster brother for most of my life, my young life, was learning how to love people. Yeah. like family that weren't you know genetically related to you that's and right i carried that into my life so that's that's a beautiful thing that's so good. you grew up obviously you grew up in a very strong uh very strong tight-knit family there's a lot of love there right how does that carry into your songwriting uh man i don't know maybe just the more i, I put more detail into some of the lyrics i write and you know some songs are fun like be the one the yeah. new song we have out that one's just kind of fun but i mean if i ever did get into detail in a song i feel like all those emotions, past experience that I've had with, you know, having to love somebody that's not blood to me as a brother, you know, that's a lot different than just loving a brother as a brother. So I don't know. I think may, it'll correlate in uh, the songwriter might be deeper in some ways. I think I've had some songs like uh, Never Want to Leave is a song I have out. It's a pretty deep song about just, you know, roots in your hometown, family, that kind of stuff. So I think it correlates in that kind of way. All right, so has, has country always been your genre? I mean, has it just been just that, like, or did you grow up with, like, other influences? So, I mean, honestly, grew up listening to anything that my dad was listening to. A lot of country music, obviously. But it wasn't really, like, I kind of listened to everything growing up. So pop music was there, and as far back as I can remember, my papa would listen to old 50s records and stuff. So I, I grew up listening to it all. And I guess... My favorite growing up was I love pop music. That was what I loved growing up on. And hip hop music was always so cool to me because it wasn't country. Country was just like real instruments. But when you when you got into that pop side, it was like anything's game now, man. <laughs> so it was like grew up listening to pop. And honestly, when I first started, I was 
I call myself a failed SoundCloud rapper because I like doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's still out there too. Um, it's funny, but uh, that's your homework assignment. Go find Josh Kinney's uh, failed yeah. SoundCloud rapping songs first and send them <laughs> to me. I want to hear them too. That's funny. All right, so um, let's talk then about. You said it took a while to get something out there, and you finally got some out there. Be the one, it's right? A single, um, and it's great, by the way. If you haven't heard it, go find it. Uh, we'll tell you where in just a bit. But um, now is that is that one that that's one that you wrote, or is that one that you co-wrote with somebody? How, where'd that one come from? So uh, Striker, my guy over here, he uh, set me up with Ty March, like we were talking earlier, and um, basically he said we need something. We just need something that's going to catch people's attention, something that's upbeat. So we're like, oh, I bet we can do that. And we wrote this thing over Facetime. We didn't we didn't even meet in person. Never met this kid in my life, but we ended up writing this song. Took us thirty minutes maybe, because I mean I kind of had the chorus idea a little bit. And we kind of just threw some verses on it, and we rolled with it, dude. Easiest ride ever I've ever had. Me and Ty are really, uh, like, this mindset we have writing, it's like the same. We both have ADD, so we knock that thing out in a heartbeat. Because if we did, we'd get sidetracked in a heartbeat. So, yeah, that song, just upbeat, fun, and y'all should definitely go check it out. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so um, we've got Josh Kinney, our guest uh, from Gardendale, Alabama. Real proud to have uh, this young man in here. He's now, are you now living in Nashville or are you still in Gardendale? I, I just recently moved to Nashville a few months ago. Working full-time and doing music full-time. Absolutely. Best of both worlds. The album, is it done? Is it out or is it just a single right now? Well, it's just a single. I think we're just going to stick with releasing singles, right? Yeah. I think for now, and honestly, the market, if you look at it nowadays, stay, not Morgan Wallen. Exclude him. A lot of people are just releasing EPs and singles right now. And I think that's kind of the direction yeah, we're going to go. Morgan like releasing box sets of new music. Yeah, uh, drops yeah. like three records yeah. in one. Seriously, so. you know? <laughs> so, all right, well, if somebody is uh, uh, interested in learning more about Josh Kinney or listening to your music, how do they find you on the internet? I mean, if you got social media, Facebook, Instagram, anything, it's Josh Kinney Music. It's K-I-N-N-E-Y. Everybody likes to go straight for the K-E. So, But it's K-I-N-N-E-Y. And then if you're into that website stuff, joshkinneymusic.com. All right, so look for Josh Kinney. Listen uh, for uh, Be The One if you want to hear it. Make sure you call us here at Kick Side 6. We will happily play it for you. Sounds great, by the way. Um, and look for Josh Kinney on social media. And hopefully, you know, maybe you can catch him on a tour. If you're from the great state of Alabama like us, hopefully we get him to play somewhere local here real soon and you can come see him here. Josh, thanks for coming to visit us. Thank again. you for having me, man. That's right. awesome. Hopefully we can get him to play a song for us here on our elsewhere here on our YouTube channel. So stick around and uh, look uh, for that. Josh Kenny is our guest. It's the Artist Video Blog. We'll see you next time. 96.1 Kicks 96. I want to be the one to hold you every night.